Well, it's running streams for another now. Uh, in 2013, we started a new tradition at Brooks High School. A valedictory speech is the highest honour that can be bestowed and delivered by, delivered by one of our Year 10 students. It was a very challenging task for our Year 10 staff to select this year's valedictorian. Our 2022 valedictorian is an outstanding member of our school community. The personal growth of this young person has been staggering throughout their four years. They have exemplary attendance, not missing a day this year, have been a role model student with tremendous application to their study and leads by example, positively influencing others. This student is held in the highest regard by their peers, teachers and our school community. He is an upstanding and highly respected member of our year group and is the Ducks of Year 10 this year. It is our honour to introduce to you our valedictorian for 2022, Wade Harris. Good view up here. Everyone looks amazing, especially you, Riley. Can't wait to see how good everyone looks tonight. Right. Good morning to everyone here today. Students, our families, teachers, school staff, and of course, my fellow graduating classmates. The day has finally come. It's our final day of school, and I'm honored to have been given the role of saying farewell to everyone who has supported us every step of the way. Many of us have been looking forward to this day since we first started high school, some even dreading it. However, whether you're excited for this day to come or not, it's here. And I hope, and I hope that in just these few brief minutes, I can remind you of the great times we've shared here at Brooks and how much we've grown together. So where do I start? Do I talk about the classrooms, the size, the chairs, the view, the work we did, or the work we avoided? Or do I talk about the people in them? Do I talk about the teachers who influenced and inspired us? Or the friendships created and broken? Or the characters of the grade? We each have our own story of our time here. Our grade has grown so much in the last four years. Just take a look at Nathan Armstrong, who hasn't grown an inch over, who hasn't grown, ooh. <laughs> who hasn't seemed to stop growing until he reached six foot five. However, there are, there are others whom I can't say the same for, like Brady Higgs, who hasn't seemed to grow an inch over five foot eight since grade seven. <laughs> it seems like the perfect time to go back four years. Entering grade seven, we were as nervous as ever. We were taking that massive leap from being at the top of our primary schools to the bottom of high school. But I'll tell you what, that big jump sure didn't affect our confidence to make grade seven an untelevised UFC show. <laughs> it will be a normal Thursday lunch sitting down minding your own business when you see Lincoln and Daniel going at it. <laughs> Look to your right and you'd probably see Emma and Brady who managed to have a grade seven relationship longer than two weeks. <laughs> But I'm sure that there are a few people in the grade who are ever going to forget getting to see much more of Justin than we'd like to in the Aquatic Centre change rooms. <laughs> as slow as Grade 7 felt then, Grade 8 went by just as slow. We can all take a good guess why. COVID-19. You've heard it before, lockdowns and online learning. It was a major part of our lives though. We had gone from 15 minute silent readings in class to reading off a Padlet. There probably wasn't much growth in our learning at this time. This is quite unfortunate when we've now recognised the amount of effort put in by our teachers, especially Mr Waller and Mr Chatterton, who along with having to do Facebook lives, were tasked with dealing with Ryan and Caleb at the peak of their behaviour. Some unknown student wouldn't make their job any easier when he connected to their screen to play an explicit intro whilst they were playing Silent Bob. <laughs> that was the start of what caused nightmares for teachers, especially the following year. Grade 9 was the art of irritating teachers with this trick. I can't imagine how sick of it Mr Murray and Bush Harris were getting. I'm sure they're not going to forget having to continuously turn the projector off, just for it to be turned back on so Ryan can blast heavy metal again. While connecting to screens didn't come with much regret or punishment, I can't say the same for Josh, who had to pay for the class window he smashed by thinking he was the next coming of MJ. <laughs> then there were the TikTok accounts. I reckon even the teachers had a bit of a laugh at our videos. Well, eventually. As grade 10 rapidly approached, we knew what such a critical year it would be and the huge importance it would bear on our futures. It was obvious we had grown, more mature, more focused, well, most of us. 
The year was full of uncertainty, pressure and joy, and as you look back at the late night studying, exams and Wednesday literature circles, we should all be proud of what we have accomplished and how much we've grown as individuals and as a grade. But I don't believe there was anyone or anything that grew as Mr Blundell's shadow, which we found out wasn't a shadow, but it was in fact the Tyson Barber. <laughs> We're all going to be heading into 2023 with different plans, whether it be furthering our education, apprenticeships or even a job. No matter where or what it is you're doing next year, there's one thing I'd like everyone here to remember, not just the year 10s. It's something I and many others believe is crucial to success in and after high school. Before I explain, I'd like to ask you all to do one thing. I'd like every person in here to take their right hand and raise it as high as they can. Now I'd like you to take that same right hand and raise it just a little bit higher. Why is it? <laughs> she stuck her finger up. <laughs> Why is it that you all didn't raise your hand as high as you can the first time? What was stopping you? Well, as individuals, we have a natural tendency to stay inside our comfort zones when doing something. While we may feel safe where we're comfortable, if you stay there for too long, you're going to end up stuck like concrete. Going out of your comfort zones will come with challenges. You're going to hit walls, you're going to run into complications. To put it as simply as possible, you're going to fail. Failure comes with pain and failure isn't comfortable. But only when you're in a state of discomfort will you continue to grow. Now, I ask all of you that no matter, no matter what obstacle you come across, no matter what gets in your way, you find a way to overcome it. I know firsthand that it's the only way to grow and improve. I'm sure some of my teachers from grade 7 and 8 are shocked to see me of all people up here today as valedictorian and ducks at the school. At that time, I was lazy and work shy, but most importantly, I lacked any motivation at all. I was once like many of you sitting in front of me here today, bored out of my mind just waiting to get out to my 30 minute break, feeling like the seconds are going by at the speed of a hurrying sloth and not showing any care to what the person up here has to say. I thought I couldn't be helped by anyone, let alone a teenager. I was a student who'd achieved no better than C's and D's. I no longer viewed school as something that was worth the effort. At this time, it was like I was continuously running into a wall, getting knocked down and getting back up just to run right into it again, with no hope of getting around it. The thing is for me, those walls, those obstacles were myself. They were my own thoughts, and sometimes they can be as small as that. Obstacles don't have to be the result of other people's actions setting you back. Your own thoughts can be against what your heart desires. I've talked about the regret of my actions in my early days of high school, but don't let this make you think I no longer make mistakes, that I no longer face that wall that I would once run into. You may have noticed that unlike past valedictorians, I'm not up here wearing a prefect blazer. Around this time last year, I made the decision to not run for a spot on the prefect board, a decision that I'll greatly regret today. I've felt as if because of this, my opportunities have been significantly limited and I haven't gotten the chance to truly do what I'm capable of doing. This decision wasn't made because I didn't want the role. It wasn't that my heart wasn't with it, it's that my mind was against it. What I'm trying to tell you all is that if you're like what I once was, battling with thoughts that are always against your true desires, you need to find a way to beat them, no matter what that way may be. How much you grow and change is only dependent on the way that you react. My change wasn't the result of anyone else's actions other than my own. While of course I had amazing teachers to help, Miss Smith, Mr Murray and Blundell, in the end I was the one who responded to it the way I did. These aren't just the words and advice of some random 16 year old teenager. Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl said, between stimulus and response there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. You're the only one who controls your future. What I've just talked about is a growth mindset. A state of mind that believes there is always room for improvement. That believes you can always bounce back no matter what is standing in your way. Don't get distracted by the success of others. Don't let these big titles and awards make you believe they're out of your reach. These are all simply the titles of extraordinary stories that are up for you to write. No matter where that writing takes you, remember you're the author, editor and main character of your story. That's the mindset I'm asking you all to leave here today with and carry with you for the rest of your lives. 
Specifically to my fellow graduates, we will leave with the memories of our time at Brooks and how much we've grown over four years. We'll miss Sachin calling all his teachers, teacher, teacher. Izzy Allen giving her teacher's attitude with a stare and always leaving class to clean her glasses. Kira Lee kidnapping Mr Murray's son on the year nine excursion. Perko and Irwin sending Caleb to the foyer every lesson. And Latrell's amazing but very loud sense of humour. And of course we can't forget how fiercely contested the chess battles were, as were the word ones. But with that, it's now time for me to thank you for your time and ears today. Not only that, but thank you to the staff that helped us in our journey all throughout high school. Not just the teachers, but the cafe ladies, office staff, cleaners, teacher assistants and of course Shane. Thank you to you all and I wish the best of luck to everyone. Continue to grow, especially the graduating class of 2022. We've made it.